So let's go just a couple more quick um, passages. Let's go Acts 15, for instance. And, you know, this is Peter rising up, you know, after this dispute when some of um, these Jewish believers were trying to get the Gentiles to, you know, do some of the works of the law and get them under the bondage of law. And Peter rose up and said in verse 7, and when there had been much dispute, and Peter, Peter rose up and said, And then men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So hear the gospel and believe. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So they were converted, their hearts were purified through faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So the yoke of the law, don't don't get people under bondage of the law and tell them to start having to do this, this, or this to be baptized. Back then, you know, they're trying to get them under um, the doctrine of circumcision, for instance. You know, now it's water baptism. It's the same thing. Circumcision didn't save anybody back then by them doing it. Uh, it's not circumcision of the flesh, it's circumcision of the heart. You know, through faith. That's what leads to eternal life. In the same fashion, it's not water baptism. It's a spiritual baptism. It's not the baptism of John. It's the baptism of Jesus through faith. That's what leads to eternal life. Um, but you have all these people trying to get people under the works of the law. Um, you know, put this bondage, yoke up on people's um, neck that nobody can bear. You know, that's never its intention to follow the law to go to heaven. You know? That's what every religion in the world, save true Christianity, teaches. Um, to trust in your works, trust in repenting of sins, and doing good deeds, and all these things. Now, these things are good in and of itself, but that doesn't lead to salvation. Only through Jesus Christ can you receive salvation. And you don't add your works to His wondrous work. It's already done. Um, so he goes on. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So it's by believing that through the grace of Jesus Christ, we are saved. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Not the works of the law, not putting the yoke upon the neck of people. You, know, you don't boast in what your works. You don't boast in your efforts, anything. You don't boast that, oh, I've been water baptized, therefore I get, I'm able to go to heaven now. But most don't say, just believe and be baptized. Anyway, you know, these counterfeit churches, these false gospels, they're not going to stop there and just add one work of righteousness. No. They'll say you also have to repent of your sins. Okay, so that's a million kajillion additional works. You know, trying to stop not doing something or to start doing something you haven't done that you should do. You know, these works of omission as well as um, these good deeds, you know, um, it's all works. You know, it's it's just basically, you know, whatever they see in the Bible through the lens of the flesh they have natural glasses they've never placed their faith in what jesus christ did they've always trusted themselves and then these false prophets will continue to put that yoke on the law that they have on themselves you know they're sitting around like this with that yoke on of these repent of my sins and all this stuff and they sin daily everybody sins daily uh we we break god's commands on a daily basis in thought word or deed um, and then you'll get some people that will say, well, you have to just repent of that, you know? And so you'll have some people that feel like they'll have to name their sin or confess their sin every time a bad thought comes in their head or, you know, or before they go to bed, you know, Lord, please forgive me all my sins, you know, um, that I've done today. And, and that that saves them by quote, repenting of their sins, but that's not repenting. Repentance is turning from your sins. That's confessing your sins. Um, you know, but what we should be doing 
It's when we lay our head down before we go to bed, say, Lord, thank you for having already forgiven me of my sins by what you did. Uh, and I give you the glory. It's to the praise of your name, Lord, and what you did for us. Um, you know, and I just thank you for your grace and mercy, for I'm a sinner. Um, please give me your strength and grace uh, and love so that I can go on to spread the good news, to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ and your miraculous work, your good gifts. Um, and that's what we should be doing. You know, not cowering in fear, you know, with this lack of assurance because we're constantly feeling like you have to confess or name a sin that you do um, or you're trusting in yourself and so you're so busy worrying about yourself and what you're doing uh, or not doing in order to quote stay saved or keep your salvation that you don't have time to worry about anybody else first of all you don't know the true gospel so you can't tell it to others you're not doing anything that God commands when it comes to that because you're not trusting in Jesus finished work on the cross you know that's obeying the gospel that's obeying Jesus and God's commandments when it comes to salvation it's to rest in his finished work on the cross it's to see the son and believe on him you shall have eternal life it's to hear the gospel and believe it believe the gospel obey the gospel believe the record believe the report you know that is what we do to obey God when it comes to receiving eternal life. Not getting on the works of the law. 